Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at uh, the Pac-Man and the Miss Pac-Man board. Um, I think uh, when we go through this board, a lot of the components that you're going to see here are used on many of these type of games and uh, computers of this era, you know, in the 80s and 70s. You know, the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, the uh, Apple IIe, things like that. So a lot of stuff that we're going to look at can be used for uh, other repairs for sure. Okay, so let's start with, uh, this is an original Pac-Man board, it's not a bootleg. This is the original thing. As you can see, it says Midway on it, Pac-Man. Let's talk about some of the different components that you'll see on this board. First of all, we have what's called the uh, ROMs. ROMs are read-only memory. Okay, so I'm sure we all own a USB key. We store things on a USB key. Well, that's what these are. We actually store the code of the game, the instructions that the, the processor will use to run the game, or the graphics that it needs, we store them on these chips. And it's actually burned on. You use a thing called a ROM burner. I'm going to do a future video on that. And we burn, the, we call it burning the code, where we actually embed the code into the into the chip. Underneath, I'll put up a picture of a ROM, uh, where you'll see that underneath this is a, actually a window, uh, where we shine a UV light in, and we can actually erase the chip and reuse it. So that's what those are. And there's a couple more. I'll, when I pull this board off, you'll see so we got our four ROMs here, and our two char these are the ROMs that actually carry the graphics, the sprites, and the characters, and the, and the, the parts of the maze, and things like that, are stored in there. The next part we've got are these uh, daughter boards here, which are kind of funky. Um, what they do is, this one is called the Sync Bus Controller, and this one is called the VRAM Addresser. And what they do is they take the instructions, or whatever is being sent out of the processor, the CPU, and steer it to the the correct sections that it needs. So the one thing to remember about this board, especially this one, this one is harder to do it with. This one here is a resistor and a capacitor here and they must face outwards. A lot of times that gets put in backwards and if it does it usually uh, kills the board or one of the chips. Okay, So let's take it off and take a look underneath. As you can see it sits in a socket and this is kind of funky here too. There's a double socket here. Yeah, if you can see that. So there's a, these, the pins that actually solder to the board are quite thick and they sit in this socket. And what I have seen is maybe an operator uh, was trying to fix a board and they take this socket off and then they stuff this back on. Well, that might work for a bit, but it damages the socket and has to be replaced. So that's what can happen there. So make sure the, the double socket is there. Also, these pins are pretty flexible. So I have seen a board not working, pull this off and one or two pins are bent over. It wasn't inserted correctly. Straighten them up, put it back in, and you're away again. So that's that one. By the way, these ones here, these two, these two boards, these were originally a custom, uh, a custom chip. And I'll put up a picture here uh, where you can see that these were actually a custom chip made uh, for the, the company. And what I believe why they went for a custom solution like that is to prevent bootlegging. Although, uh, as we're going to find out, there are many, many uh, bootleg Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man boards. Apparently there was some sort of problem uh, keeping a, a steady supply of those, so they went to these separate daughter boards. So that's kind of the deal there. I've never owned a Pac-Man board that had the original uh, custom chips. I've only owned boards that had these. And there are companies on the internet that actually remake these. So you can take a, you know, you can do a search for those if you needed one. Custom solution. Uh, let's take off this here. And you can see again, it's the socket thing again with the double double socket. Okay, so that's those two there. And as we can see now that we have that off, there's our custom, or it's not our custom, but our ROMs there. Okay, uh, interesting thing to note, these ROMs are called a 2532. That is the model number of these ROMs. On an original Pac-Man board that's not modified, you will see the 2532. Good. And underneath, now that we've taken off the, uh, the sync bus controller, now we can see the CPU, which is a Z80, right? The old classic 8-bit Z80. Okay, good. Uh, what are some other chips that you need to know about? Well, if we have read-only memory, we must also have random access memory or RAM. And Pac-Man boards have two sections of it. There's one here. Okay, there's six of those. And then there's another one over here that in the service manual, um, Midway calls these the attack RAMs. Okay, so I believe what's happening there is that the, when the code is... Um, you know, getting ready to be written to the screen, it sits in this area and and then pushes out to the board or pushes out to the monitor, I guess. Uh, there's a couple of programmable chips uh, throughout the board. Here's one here, for instance. 
Uh, one of them does sound, and a couple of them are responsible for the, the palette or the colors. Okay, so for instance, this one here, you know, the board is ready to, to put something out to the screen. Uh, this chip uh, has, holds very little code, but um, it determines the, the colors uh, uh, that go to the screen. That's how that works. Okay, um, what else we got here? Volume control for your sound. Okay, so if your game's too loud, that's where you go. Also, if your game is cutting out or the sound is distorted or crackly, one thing you can do is clean that. Uh, you get contact cleaner um, and you spray it in there and you can clean that. That's how those work. It's called a potentiometer and they do get dirty. One thing that is funky about uh, Midway boards, Pac-Man specifically and uh, Galaxian is the same way, is that they take in uh, AC voltage from the from the game, from the transformer in the bottom of the game, and they turn it into DC voltage on the board. Many boards that you see uh, take DC voltage, uh, usually 12 volts and 5 volts. Uh, Pac-Man is different, so it's not it's not like you can just put it in any game. You've got to you've got to keep that in mind. There are ways to to modify the board to run off a of DC voltage, and I do that on my test bench. But that's something interesting to know. Uh, this is the edge connector here. This is what connects to the game. It uses a, this is what would be in the game. This is a newer style uh, connect, edge connector. Uh, older ones used a crimp. that You would actually crimp the connector to the wire and then shove it into the holder. Uh, this is a modern one that solders on. And that would connect to the edge connector. And these edge connectors can get dirty. And what happens then, if or they don't get dirty or corroded or worn out or whatever, what happens is, as soon as you get corrosion there, you've got resistance. It's going to resist the voltage and the current flow, and then that builds up heat, which builds up, which burns the board, which builds up more resistance, and you can see you have a cycle there. So you can actually clean these. Let me grab a fiberglass pen here. I bought some of these recently, these fiberglass brushes. These are pretty cool. So you just turn it, and you've got a little a cleaning thing. I believe they're used by jewelers, uh, and I've heard that, I'm not a car person, but I've heard that maybe they, these can be used for uh, doing a spot clean when you're going to fix a dent on a car. Again, I'm not a car person, but... So what you can do, let's take a look at... This is the ground connection here. You know, you can actually go in and, and uh, clean that. These actually, I just got these on the weekend, and they work really well. So we're going to do a future video where I'm going to try to revive my Asteroids cocktail cabinet, which is down right now, uh, which is having edge connector problems, and I really don't want to replace the edge connector, so we'll see if we can fix that. Right, so as, I don't know if you can pick that up, but that is much cleaner now. Right. So that's always a, a good way to, to keep your maintenance on your games. So, And these brushes were cheap. I think I paid seven bucks or something. They probably You can probably even get them cheaper if you shop around. Good. Okay, uh, another thing I'm going to show you here is uh, if the edge connector is completely burnt, uh, which I'll show you on the Miss Pac-Man I'm working on, you can actually repair this. Uh, I didn't come up with this method. It's from Bob Roberts. Uh, I'll post a, a link down in the description, you can take your edge connector and actually flip it backwards. And this would work on any game. Uh, but you solder that on, like that. Okay, squish the pins together and solder on the... These are two sides. Let me flip it over. As you can see, there's connections here as well, so you'd have to solder those. You can solder that on, and then... Trip's still the frame. Yep. Solder that on, and then take what's called a fingerboard. Okay, and what you would do, you have to modify this, you would cut this edge off so that the, these uh, connectors here would actually be able to, to shove in here. And then now you've got you've you've got a fresh edge connector. I'll put up a picture of, of one I've done there. But you can uh, so that's a you know that that way you can save your board. It's ugly. It's not the prettiest repair in the world, but you know if it's going to keep the game going, you know it's a great way to do it. Alrighty, uh, if you're going to you know one thing that you're going to see you know if you're repairing boards. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of repairs are mechanical in nature. I've been repairing stuff since the early '90s, professionally, and you know, a lot of repairs are mechanical in nature. And what do I mean by that? Um, you know, this voltage regulator here. You know, if it took a bad hit, it could break one of the pins or something, or you know, a broken solder joint on a capacitor. Uh, these Zener diodes here, they run very hot, and you know, at some point they could actually unsolder themselves from the board. So those are things you can look for, broken parts. Sockets, again, like if, if I was running this board and it was glitching or it was uh, it was cutting out or dropping, um, you know, it was resetting over and over again, what you can do is actually hold down the chips with your thumb and sometimes you'll actually see a reaction on the on the screen 
then you know, okay, well, I've got a bad socket or maybe a broken leg on a chip. Uh, bent legs, you know, if somebody didn't know quite what they were doing, pulled the chip out and then put it back in, maybe the legs are bent. You can check that. Another thing that can happen is if somebody's trying to get a chip out uh, and they're really aggressive with it, they can actually, if you see, all of these chips here are all hooked up in parallel. Okay, uh, these are the, the, the lines here. If you go aggressively in there with a screwdriver, you could actually break those traces. And then you've got a dead board. So you have to be very careful when you're pulling a chip. What I do is, I, there are chip pullers and stuff. I, I don't use one. I just use a, a thin screwdriver here. And I go underneath the chip very gently and I kind of wiggle the screwdriver back and forth. And as you can see, the chip is lifting out. I do that on the other side very gently, you know, and the chip will pop out, okay? So that's a good way to, to do that, that kind of thing. And I've been doing that for years and I've never, I've never had a problem. I haven't broken a chip yet. So saying that though, uh, I'll probably break one tomorrow.